welcome to Empower Your Paddle and Kick One Dough. Empower Your Paddle with James Hendricks. Adversity educator, success, confidence, and thrive coach, member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. He'll, he'll teach you that there are patterns of success that are ready for anyone to achieve. So if you come, we will join together. Let's fly. guys welcome it is good to be here you may take your seat for those of you who are listening on your device you're probably wondering what the heck jimmy haven't done this in a while um for those of you who are new this is kind of like a, a simulated audience deal because you know and i can sit here and, and, and picture in my mind i'm sitting in a chair on stage And I'm talking to you guys. Today we're going to talk about the culture of Empower Your Pattern. The culture of Pattern Realm. Okay? And so we're going to, we're going to, we're going to really ramp it up. Because you're probably knowing, well, why? To be honest with you, today has been a big day that I've been looking forward to. If you know what I mean. The culture of Empower Your Pattern. Number one. Oh, first of all, before we get to the main points of the culture, I want to say this. Empower Your Pattern would not have come to be had it not been for being, me being laid up for two months with a broken leg. <laughs> now, those of you listening at home on your device, you're like, why do you have any audience applaud to that? Because it was because of the incident and the rise from above it afterwards that's led me to finally get off my blessed assurance and become a podcaster. Okay? I want you to think about that. Because we're going to be dealing with, I believe, it's the five things that make up this culture. Number one, faith. I'm a Latter-day Saint. I have a firm belief in Heavenly Father and in Jesus Christ. It was my faith that helped me get through that. It was reading the scriptures and even the Book of Mormon during the time that I was laid up to help me become a man of God. You might say, but but, but why? If it wasn't for my faith, I wouldn't have made it. There were times when I was laid up when I had to sing in order to deal with the pain. And the people working on me is like, why the heck is he? Why the heck are you singing? I said, takes my mind off the thing. Well, other times I just had to grin and bear it. Although there were times I, and when I was laid up, I wanted to scream at the top of my lungs because of how bad the pain was. I didn't like being that way. But I'll tell you something, it made me stronger. It brought me closer to the Lord. It brought me to where I needed to be. It brought me to the time to it to a time where it was either the Lord 
or nothing. And, and there's going to be an episode about this in the future. There was a point when I was recovering when I almost gave up. And I would have. But this one nurse's aide, God bless her, she was the one that gave me the determination to try to keep fighting. And to be honest with you, I went to her afterwards and apologizing for wanting to give up. And she turned to me and she said, you know what? It's in the past. It's in the past. But, you know, the future, if you can keep your faith in the Lord Jesus, no matter what the calamities are, you have a chance to make it. You may say, but, but, but Jimmy, this is a business podcast. Why, why don't we talk about faith? Because my faith is a part of everything that I do. <laughs> People have a hard time with that. And, 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 and they wonder why. Because we, we we have such a degenerate culture that if you mention faith, they get offended. I did my best while I was like that to be to be a man of God. I did my I did my best to to be kind to people because that's that's really who I want to pursue, pervade myself to be. Just. A humble, kind, decent person. And the one thing that helped me during the time that I was laid up with a broken leg, you guys got to forgive me, okay? I'm feeling the Holy Ghost pretty strong right now. The one thing that helped me through all this was my faith in the Lord Jesus. You may say, well... <laughs> If, if the Holy Ghost has come upon you, why, why, Jimmy, are you so emotional? Because one thing I learned even before I became a Latter-day Saint is the Holy Ghost touches the human heart. And it's not necessarily, you know, a shout. Oftentimes it's a quiet whisper. It's a feeling. In my faith, I do the best I can to uh, invite the Spirit as I read the Scriptures. You see, my faith is a part of everything that I do. And and I, I, I won't go back on that, no matter, no matter what it takes. Because with all the junk that's out there, and there's a lot of junk, we have to we have to be mindful. We have to be watch, watchful. But my faith is a part of everything that I do. Me wanting to speak on stage and say, "I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to give up what I believe." I mean, to to presume that I'm one person. Um. In, 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 in private as far as my beliefs but on stage I'm a sell out uh uh okay that, that, that would make me mad if somebody thought that I would just be a sell out no that is not what empower your pattern is about it's about staying true to who you are and what you believe and I, I believe in that with all my heart Okay. Let me tell you something. My faith was strengthened during that time I was laid up. 
and even, I would say, even several months afterwards. Oftentimes, faith was born in adversity. I found my understanding of God and Jesus Christ through some of the deepest adversities, through some of the deepest sadnesses in my life. Like my divorce. Like when I was laid up with, with a broken leg. Th those moments, even though they were pretty bad, they transformed my life. And that's why I'm glad to have a sit down with you guys and talk to you in my deepest heart about what I believe is going to help people succeed. Yeah, I can sit there and talk about business moves and setting goals, and yeah, we'll get to that. But the first thing out of the bat that makes it empower your pattern is faith. And I will not apologize for that. I want to live a righteous life, if you guys know what I mean. I stand on that. I'll keep to that. I don't compromise on my faith. And neither should you. I stay true to who I am. I don't compromise my convictions. Maybe I've had opportunities that I was to compromise. I almost compromised it in a dating relationship. When I saw how it was going, I broke it off with her. Because in no way should we compromise what we believe in for anything or anybody. Not even the chase for success. That's not true success. Just saying what's on my heart here about faith. The second one is about the dream, God's gift that has been put into your heart, that's been put inside you, that's bursting to come out. You know what? We're going to talk about that quite a bit pretty soon. Now, I want you guys to be ready. Because I believe that regardless, my audience have empowered your pattern. You all have a message inside you. Whether it's proclaiming your faith or talking about, about business matters or... or Whatever it is, you have it inside you. And it's just dying and begging to come out. I want you guys to forgive me again, please. The spirit is pretty strong upon me. I've had a message that's been dying to come out for... Shoot. About 14 years. Podcasting and Toastmasters so far has been the main way for it to come out. Except for on occasions when I'm called by church leaders to speak in church. And I enjoy those moments. I enjoy those moments. And there's something about it. It doesn't let you go. The thing is, we, we all have an enemy to that dream, to that message that's inside us. You know what that enemy is, who he is, 
He's the enemy of our soul. Lucifer. Hasatan. He wants us to give in. He wants us to react to the degenerate culture fun house that he has set up with. with. And sometimes we dreamers and, and people of faith need to stand up and say, Enough! Seriously. And I could, I, could, I, could, I could go on about this day and night. Because in many ways, I'm, I'm, I'm hot after our enemy. I'm, I'm angry because of some of the things he's been pulling on, 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 on God's people. But I don't want to motivate you guys by angry, anger. I don't want to motivate you guys by fear. I want to motivate you with love and happiness. Knowing that you've got this gift inside you. You've got this message inside you. Something God wants you to tell people about. And you just got to find the right target audience to listen to. You may save it. Jimmy, how did you get that wisdom? Took me hitting rock bottom. In 2013, I knew I had a dream. I knew I had a gift inside inside me. But the biggest problem is the the enemy sends these little these little critters, these thoughts, to tell us, you know, hey, we're not worth it. You know, a piece of crap. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you gotta learn to get past that. You gotta learn to tell yourself, hey, that's not true. Because you know something? We're made in the image of God. Yesterday, I was on the phone with a friend of mine from church. And I'm, I'm gonna say this one thing he and I agreed with is that we're all co creators of God. We are, we are his creation, his technology, intelligence from intelligence. And two, let me tell you something, two-thirds of God is go. That means get out there and pursue your dreams. That means get out there and make it happen. Let me ask you this. How many of you, you have this message inside you and it's dying to come out and you want people to remember you because of that? How many of you have that? Seriously. How many of us are willing to trust God and know that with his help we can we can have this? See, there are patterns. There are patterns to success that God has set forth. He set us up with a message and he set us up with a variety of patterns we can choose. Sometimes the pattern doesn't go the way we, we, we want it to be. But you know, the, the series I did last summer on up to last fall um, Repattern. Sometimes we gotta repattern. And and sometimes it's a miss. Sometimes it's a miss. But let me tell you something. You gotta learn to love that miss. (laughs) 
But, but Jimmy, but Jimmy, I hate it. You don't think I don't? You don't think I don't, I don't like, I don't like the mess? No. But our mess, our mess becomes our message. And in many ways, let me tell you something. In many ways, this is where this is where the, the the basis is. Faith in God, faith that you know, He has a dream inside you, and having faith and determination that you're going to reach out, that you're going to listen to me, that you're going to reach out, that you're going to reach out and retain and then retain that dream. Now, I'll tell you guys this much. I have had some mental health challenges lately. But I don't know. It's like now that I'm on uh, now that I'm on uh, um, different dosages of my medicine, I feel that empowering. Like I can rise like a phoenix. And go out there and get my message proclaimed and be remembered for leaving a legacy. Do I have a wife and kids and grandkids and all that stuff? No. But I do have people around me that I know love me. And care about me. And I'm aware that God loves me. I want to reach out to each and every one of you, knowing that you're saying, and then these last moments of this, this deal here, if you got a message that's inside you, you got to look down and realize that what's stopping you is you, your fear. And the negative thoughts that you, you keep ruminating about you. You got to find a way to stop that. We all do. <laughs> because you see, fear is a thief of success. And procrastination comes in second place. You got to do something about those things. In fact, in the church, our, our, one of our, in my, in my church, one of the things that we warn against spiritually is procrastination. And I think this works both temporally and spiritually. We don't need to do either one. But if you got that gift, if you got that message that's inside you, <clears throat> the enemy, the adversary may throw every, anything and everything at you but the kitchen sink. But you got to have that determination to get up and get out there and make it happen so you can be remembered and, and make a legacy. <laughs> do that you gotta have some heart you gotta have some heart for the people the audience that you're that you're there okay in in the final moments of this you, you you gotta have some heart towards the people love the ones that you're sending the audience to love them love the people care about them please that's the best part right there actually caring about them that's what matters. Number three, choices. Okay, this is where my CAP method coaching comes in. 
Choose, act, pursue happiness. Number three, choices. You need to make some informed choices and then act on them, okay? It's not just choice alone. you got to act on them. Not hasty at first, but definitely develop and, and work on and get into that plan of action. I know it sounds scary. There's one thing in, in my faith that we teach is you can pick your choice, but you don't pick the consequences of those choices. Because they're in the pattern set forth by God. Choices. That sounds kind of heavy, doesn't it? Requires discipline. Requires determination. Reminds me when I was laid up with that leg. I almost fell a couple times. Especially around the time that I wanted to give up. I was scared out of my mind. I'm not lying here. And I know I know this talk, I get emotional a lot. And it's not like, oh, 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 oh Jimmy's. Jimmy's off his rock or something like that. No. I'm saying this because we all have a choice. And when I caught pneumonia, well, I was laid up with my, my leg situation. My friend, uh, Dave, who was my bishop, and in my faith we say once a bishop, always a bishop. <laughs> bishop. He came to me and he said, when I was in the hospital for pneumonia, he said, don't you dare give up on me. And don't you dare give up on yourself. He said, Jimmy, you're going to rise up and walk one day. And that's what I wanted so bad. Not just to walk, but in some like cases, to, to run. I wanted to be able to get up and do things again. And so it, it, what, it took, what it took deep down inside, listen to me. What it took deep down inside is to defy what the experts were saying. Well, we don't know when you're going to walk again. Well, we don't know how much physical therapy it's, it's going to take. But it's going to take a while. And, and I was blessed at the time to have the friends to tell me about what those experts were saying. Uh, 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 no. No. Jimmy, you are going to get up and walk again if we are to take you out of here, out of here and help you walk yourself. Let me tell you something. And then there was another time I called a friend crying. And I was just close to getting it, but I, I, I thought, I'll never walk again. I'm trapped. And my friend, she wisely said, hush, I don't want to hear that. You are going to walk again. And you got to stop giving up. She said, you want to get up and walk? Get up and walk. I got off the phone with her. And then I don't know. I mean, people may say, well, well, well Jimmy, you're being awfully kooky here. But it's almost like I felt my granddad was in that uh, rehab facility room. And I heard him say, son, if you want to get up and walk, get up and walk and walk like a man. And I got up there. And I walked to my chair. My last day, my last, my last full day, in that, in that facility. My physical therapist panicked when she saw me get up and walk to my chair. How could you do that? I said, I can walk now. No, you can't. That, no. <laughs> J 
James Hunter, that's impossible. That's impossible. There's no way. You need more physical therapy. You're supposed to walk without the boot. And I called my mother upset, and she said, Trust me, someone is going to get you out of there, son, so you can walk. The next day, the next evening, Bishop Day walked up. I told the nurses to get to get some bags together to pack my stuff because I was getting out of there. Now, I felt bad because I had to undercut the system and leave some people in, in the facility behind that I cared about. But it's it's kind of like what, what Bishop Davis said, Jimmy. You have to move on. You, you you have to move on. Move above. Get going. He said. But but take it slow. Don't try to be a hero. I show up. I show up a few days later. To my surgeon, the facility had canceled my appointment, but they rescheduled. And I was brimming with anger at the facility. (laughs) I'm not going to go into the details of what I said, but I was angry. A couple days later, I'm back in. uh, in The next week, I'm at that same surgeon's office. He said, well, it's obvious you're doing better. We're going to take you off the boot. So we took, we took, I went to the house and took off my boot. I may still have it somewhere. I don't know. And then that night, I pushed the walker aside and started walking on my own. <sighs> And it was a choice that I had made. It was a choice that I had made. And I trusted my God and my Savior. Tell me do that. My mother saw me for the first week or so after I got out. She's like, I can't believe they left you this week. She said they would have kept, they would have kept in, you in there forever if, if and not the church and, 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 and the family intervened. And you know something? I rose above it. And I fought like you wouldn't believe. Let me, let me tell you something. I fought with all my might. Cause something tell me, Jimmy, you have greatness inside you. You can't just let some some banged up plague get in your way. Okay, now choice back to choices. Okay, while well, I was going on the way to the doctor's appointments, uh, Bishop Dave's wife Emily was listening to some podcasts. One of them I liked by Jody Moore called Better Than Happy. And she said, Jimmy, you should even listen to podcasts, podcasts even, even be a podcaster yourself. So again, back to choices. I started listening to podcasts. I gobbled podcasts like, like I do cookies. <laughs> Maybe in as much as I used to, but... I need to get back into that because I think I think it would really help me. But we all have we all have a choice. We we can choose to be miserable or we can choose to be happy. And I know it's hard. This world knocks us down. 
But we've got to choose. Listen to me. Listen to me. We've got to choose to be happy. No matter how hard they try, no matter what what is done to knock us down, we've got to choose happiness, dang it. We've got to. No ifs, ands, or buts. All right? Now I'm going to say this with all my, all my heart. We've, you've got a choice to make. we got a choice to make. Are we going to, listen to me, are we going to choose to be happy? Or are we going to choose to be miserable? That's a tough choice. Now, we're going to go ahead and go to the fourth one. And that is discipline. Discipline and determination. You will not believe all the obstacles I've had. All the obstacles I have. But you know something? I praise Jesus. I praise Jesus for those obstacles. When I was four years old, an eye doctor told my mother that chances are with all the birth defects he has, he's mentally challenged. There's no hope of him having a normal education here in the local public schools. Send him off to the school for the blind. Guess what? I got a high school education, a normal high school education at Permian High School. The fall before I graduated, a team of Local and state experts got together and they said, and and even after I graduated, he is socially, emotionally, and mentally immature and is therefore unfit for college. And they fought me tooth and nail. But now let me tell you something. You fought for Jimmy against his, you fought against Jimmy and his dreams. Don't be surprised if Jimmy don't fight back. <laughs> don't be surprised. And finally, When I threatened to involve the National Federation of the Blind, the state experts were like, okay, okay, we cry, uncle, we'll let you go to college. But all through college, the state experts was like, you don't deserve to go to college. You never should have gone to college. You know, over and over and over again. He's crazy. He's crazy. He wanted, to, he wanted to go to college. He thinks he's going to get a college diploma. He's crazy. He's unfit. He's crazy. <laughs> Let me tell you something. All those naysayers, they're crazy. But Jimmy, but Jimmy, but Jimmy, you don't know what all these other people are saying about me. You don't know what all those people are saying about me on social media. You know what? we got to stop caring about what other people think. We've got to stop caring about what other people think. Because it all goes down 
to your discipline and, and determinations. It goes down to your daily habits. Now, it is, is it easy? No. But like Jim Rohn says, he says, don't wish things were easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Okay? That's, that's a thing right there. Don't wish for things to be easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. A few years later, I was back, and you know, I had gone the, the summer of 1991 before going to college to Chris Cole Rehabilitation Center in Austin. I was back there three, three years later. And I was trying to get housing situations straightened out at the dorm. And I had the state experts and even well-meaning friends. Oh, Jimmy, it's not going to happen. They're not going to close up shop, go back home, give up. You're not going to. You're not going to be able to make it all the way through Texas Tech. I was like, no. I'm believing in the Lord and the power of His Spirit and might that I am going to get into Texas Tech, and I am going to get the housing crisis solved. Guess what? I did. With the Lord's help, I did. Now, is it totally solved all the time? No, no. And why? Because I took my eye off the ball. I let baser emotions like anger and fear get in the way. Let me tell you something. That is how the enemy of our souls motivates people. It's the world, it's the earth curse system, okay? It's the earth curse system. And you've got to have the determination deep down in your soul to fight that earth curse system. You say, well, Jimmy, how did you get that idea about earth curse system? There's a pastor I listen to. Uh, his name is uh, um, Gary Cassie. Have a nickname with him. I call him Gary K. Pastor Gary K. And he talks about how you know the Earth curse system leaves you striving in the wrong direction, whereas you rest in the Lord and being in ob- obedience to the laws of the kingdom of God. And no, he's not a Latter-day Saint. He's he's not a Latter-day Saint for those of you in the church. He's not a member of the church. But he's a good, solid Christian man. I wouldn't mind listening to him again sometime on YouTube because I'll tell you something. His preaching is, is, is spot on. Okay? But you've got to have that discipline and determination, and determination inside you. All those people saying, you'll, you'll never do it. You'll never do it. And even when I got into Texas Tech, you'll never do it. You'll never get that diploma. See, see, see. You'll never get it. But you know what? Years later, I went back to that same university, and they have a different caseworker. And she's like, what in the world were those old caseworkers thinking? Jimmy, you got something inside you. We all got something inside. You got something inside you. <laughs> but how do we find a way to get it out? Through our choices, through our discipline and determination, that's the action part. That's the one where, you know, I'm a gun nut, okay? So y'all y- y'all excuse me on that one. I'm a gun nut. Your, the dream inside you, that's a bullet. Your choices to trigger the firing 
That's the discipline, the determination. That's something inside you that's coming out with your help, your efforts. And you're pushing it forward. But you can't do it alone. You have to ask God to help you. That's a secret sauce right there. Because he's the one that's holding you. If you have faith in him. If you stay strong with him. If you endure in him. Okay? You have to have that hope in him. But you mean we were talking about this with determination. How's that? How does faith have anything to do with that? Everything. Everything. Back in 1991, getting through college, I, I really didn't have the faith. I wasn't walking close to the Lord at that time like I should have been. But by 1994, I was. I was in church every week. I was reading the Bibles, reading the devotionals, and, and everything. Because I wanted to stay close to the Lord. Your faith, your faith and your discipline and determination will only rise to the extent to the heed and diligence that you pay close attention to those things. You're like, man, Jimmy, you're here being awfully, how do I say it? You're being awfully tough. Why? Because discipline and determination is everything when it comes to success. I wrote a chapter on it in my book, The Winning Personality. <laughs> the Winning Personality. A values-based approach to entrepreneurship in this economy. Because the first chapter just lays the groundwork of, of, work of what the uh, winning personality is. The, the rest of it is the values you need to have. When I first had it in mind, I thought it was the, the traits of the... Of the uh, winning personality and it's funny uh, being like that with a broken leg <laughs> made me change it from traits to, to, to values because I'm a values based person and, and discipline and determination is a key value for success and, and you've got to put that down in your soul you got a habit. Stick to your habits every day. That'll lead you to your, towards your success. Find you a good mentor. But get with those discipline and determination. Stick with it. No matter how hard the road is. No matter how tough the road is. I'm preaching to myself as much as I am to everybody else out here. The fifth road, the fifth thing that makes it is creating patterns. When I was living with my family years ago, well, as far back as 2020, 2021, they thought it was weird that I wouldn't come sit and watch that much TV with them. I preferred to listen to audiobooks. They thought it strangely weird that I liked to get up early in the morning. I thought it was a, a key to success. The thing is, listen to me. With this, with your habits, you don't have to be like everybody else. And with Empower Your Pattern, you're not called to be like everybody else. You're called to be extraordinary. And why? Because you're an irrepeatable miracle from God. Okay? Listen to me. 
in, in, in the last 10 minutes, I want to say this. You're an irrepeatable miracle from God. And he wants you to live by the patterns and habits that he has in mind to help you succeed. You get up early in the morning, you're more inclined to read your scriptures. You're more inclined to, to, to pray. You're in the family, more inclined to, to, to read and pray with your with your family. I know, it's the toughest part, right? But it's also the best part. Creating your pattern. Getting rid of the drama and the distractions that's in your life. That's why I'm not on social media that much. It's because so much of it anymore is, is just distraction. Now, do, do I am on YouTube? Yes. I get a lot of my enjoyment on YouTube. Do I think maybe I should curb some of that? Yeah. I'll be honest with you. But I think we should have habits and routines that glorify God. That makes us close to Him. Okay? I think our first order of business, have a mentor named Presley Swaggerty. First thing he does, after he has his cup of coffee, of course, I don't, I don't drink coffee. But after his first cup of coffee, he reads his Bible. And then he listens to uh, a success audiobook. Pretty easy, right? In, in the evening, he, he, he watches YouTube videos of, of people in professional development. I need to get back into those pattern morning routines because they, they lead to happiness. Create your pattern. That's one of the, 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 the ten rules of empower your pattern. That's the fifth rule. Create your pattern, your routines, your habits. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to sacrifice towards your success? What are you willing to change? What are you willing to try? What are you willing to go for? Who, you, who can you find to help you? And you need to find the most gifted, determined people to, to do it. I didn't think it was possible, but I do now. If you let your doubts and your fears and your base emotions guide your habits, then you can't succeed. But if you let the blessed emotions, the blessed life that God gives you, then yeah, you can succeed. Not only you can succeed, but you will succeed. I don't think I'm ever given a talk this long. I don't remember ever doing this. And you know what? It feels good to, to develop these patterns. This is the culture of Empower Your Pattern. This is what I talk about on Empower Your Pattern. Okay? So set it up. Get into it. It's the only way you're going to make it. But in order to do that, you got to put your trust in the Lord and Him alone to help you create that pattern for your success. You may think, well, but Jimmy, why? Why? Because the patterns of success in this world are set forth by God and by God alone. Now, let me close with this one thing. 
Dr. the late Dr. Stephen Covey, who um, attended the same worldwide church that I did, said this. So a thought uh, reap a word. So a word reap a habit. So a habit reap a character. So a character reap a destiny. We got to watch what we say. We got to watch what we do in order to help us succeed. I love Dr. Stephen Covey. I, I admire him. God bless him. And God bless his soul. But we have to create our pattern and put it in line with God's pattern. Do you think I, I want to do this all the time just for money? No. The money's important, don't get me wrong. But it's also about blessing and impacting people's lives. That's why I do what I do almost every day. Bless and impact people's lives. Because people have enough negative messages as it is. And I know some of us were tired of it. Some of us, sadly, they're hooked. So we got to watch that, okay? Please watch what you put in your spirit. I'm warning you about that because it's so easy to get saturated in negative. Instead, I want you to get saturated in positive. Read God's Word. Read good success audiobooks and even some of the spiritual, um, even um, listen and watch to some of the great spiritual talks. The people that I admire, you know, um, Gary Kay, um, Dr. Charles Stanley, uh, Joe Olstein, um, Jeffrey R. Holland, uh, David A. Bednar. Those last two are theologians in my faith. Guys, we can do this. And I hope that this helps and blesses your lives. God bless you. Well, I'm back to studio mode. I, it took. I tried writing that speech last night, and um, I just couldn't. The Lord just put that in my heart. It's something. Back when I was a kid, I got a best in speech award when I was in junior high, and the the teacher said he can make a five minute speech without ever reading a note. And now I'm doing it. I did. I just did it for nearly an hour. But seriously, guys, keep to these patterns. Keep keep to these five things, and you'll be in the culture of empowering your empowering your pattern. You 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 will have it made. You don't have everything that you desire, but you'll have it made. Okay. I've been looking forward to to making this for a long time. And we may have some more of these occasions. Because I, 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 um, I like to simulate an audience feel. I don't want to do it all the time. But this is one of those times when I leave, I will. So I hope that you enjoy it. Hope that you enjoy listening to Empower Your Pattern 2.0. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and come a part of Pattern Realm. Until next time. Don't just sit there and take it. I want you to go out there and build your dreams so you can take it. Do what, listen to me. Do what others don't so you can be what others won't. And do what others won't so you can have what others can't. Please share with Mama Son, Papa Son, and everyone. This is Jimi Hendrix saying until next time, choose, act, and pursue happiness. God bless you. And remember this from the bottom of my heart Jimmy loves you. I really, really, really love you. God bless you, and please have a blessed day.